you know, what our record is. All right. So that record is four and five, bottom half of the division behind the um, Bills and Dolphins, which is a rare thing to say about the Patriots. So, Stephen A., let me ask you this. Do you think the Pats are more likely to finish below or above 500? Neither. I got them at eight and eight. I just look okay. at the rest of their schedule right here um, at, at, at four and five. Could they go four and three over the final games of the season? Sure. But they've got Houston. Uh, I think that's a win. But then there's Arizona, both L.A. teams, the Chargers and the Rams, the Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills. Um, I'm definitely giving them a victory over Houston. I'm definitely giving them a victory over the New York Jets. Um, and I think that between Arizona, Chargers, Rams, Dolphins, and Bills, they will go two and three. And that's where they go. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's where they go to eight and eight. And so for me, uh, that's, how, that's how I view them right now. I think that defensively, Bill Belichick always figures out a way to keep his team in a contest to make them competitive. But I thought they were assisted greatly by inclement weather in Foxborough on Sunday when they were going up against the Ravens. I don't anticipate that that's going to be a case, particularly in Houston and particularly in, in L.A. and Miami. They got three road games, two of them in Southern California and one of them uh, near South Beach. I don't think weather will be an issue in those games. So that's where I'm at with it. I think that offensively they're challenged, defensively better, but the bottom line is I just don't think they have enough offensive firepower to win. They'll keep games competitive and close, but ultimately I see them going 4-3 and three over the last seven games and finishing with an 8-8 eight and eight record. I'm going to take them to go over 500, guys. And I, I understand exactly what you're saying, Stephen A. It's good logic. And I'll say that their point differential, which tells you underlying, like, is, is negative. They, they give up more points than they score, which means they should be. Under 500, right? But let me say something about that real quick. Miami, they start the season as a very good team, as it turns out. They won by two scores. Seattle, they lost on a goal line stand. Seattle was like 7, 8, and 1 at one point, right? The Raiders, they won by three scores. That's your sleeper pick in the AFC, Stephen A. Then they play the Chiefs without Cam because of COVID. And without Cam and with a terrible call that went against them, they were competitive for most of that game. Then they had a bad part of the season, right? The Broncos and the Niners, they lose to the Broncos, a team they were favored to beat. They get stomped out by the Niners. But I'll remind you, this is right around the time where their, their facilities were often shut, like the Chiefs, the, those the Chiefs game on. Their facilities were shut down for days at a time. And when you have all those defections off the defense because of COVID and other reasons to start the season, and when you have very few offensive weapons and, and the coach is doing it with spit and bubble gum, boy, you need that practice time, right? I think they, our perception of this team is negatively affected by the fact that COVID hit the quarterback, shut down the facilities, and they lost to two teams, one of them badly, that put them in a real hole. How about since then, as they've come out of that, as they've been able to practice, as, as Cam has gotten healthy, they barely lose to the Bills. Cam is stripped or else probably they win that game. They beat the Jets. They claw their way to the victory against a bad team. And then they just beat a very good team in the Ravens. So actually, when you look at this season... When the Broncos and the Niners make us think of them differently. So now think of a team that's already beaten Miami, beaten the Raiders, beaten the Ravens, came very close against the Seahawks and the Bills, and now look at their schedule. I think they can beat the Texans, Chargers, and Jets. I think that can be three wins. Can they lose one of those games? Sure. But I think that they'll do it against those three teams. Now I'm looking at Arizona at Foxborough. That's, you know, uh, uh, on the road against the Rams, on the road against Miami and the Bills. Can they go two and two? Based on what I've seen in their quality wins and near losses, I think they can. I think there's a good chance this team can win nine games, and I'll take them to win nine games in spite of this point differential and in spite as, of how they've looked at their worst. Yeah, I agree with you, Max. I mean, when you, when you look at this football team, Listen, Bill Belichick, I mean, he's doing, he is doing an incredible job coaching this football team. When you talk about all the guys who, who, who um, you know, decided not to play because of COVID, like you said, going through the experience with the team as, as Cam tested positive and throughout that entire time, it's been a masterful job of coaching just to stay competitive in games, in all honesty. And like you said, they probably should have beat the Bills, right? It comes down to Cam holding on to the ball late, which is a very good football team. 
and I, I'm, I'm the same way you. I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on them getting nine wins. And and here, here, this is the crazy part about them. At nine wins, they're not going to make the playoffs right or whatever, so they're kind of out. I think everybody in the AFC would take a big sigh of relief because when when Bill Belichick gets his script for you in the playoffs, I think I think teams get tight. The other part about the Arizona game in particular, I will say this, it will be interesting for me to watch how they defend Kyler Murray, right? Like, like we just saw the Bills have a 23-7 to uh, uh, lead going into the fourth quarter and not be able to hold it. I'm interested to see how that thing plays out. I- I'm telling you, the Patriots and Belichick have done a really good job of buying in. I don't love Cam talking about we're better than our record or, or however he says that kind of thing. Because the truth is, you are what you are, right? Like, like it, it is what it is, and so your record is what, what you've played to. But they do have the capability, because of coaching, to, to play better than we all anticipated. And I think they have. And, and again, Bill Belichick, you know, the greatest of all time or somewhere in that, that category. But it's been a masterful job on the coaching side. Stephen A? Any? All right. <laughs> yep. We, we can we talk. We can... I'm yeah, good. we can wrap it up there. But it's a good thing Jeff's sticking around because up next we have a Stevens A list, which could be a Stevens B list, and we'll let Jeff be a judge of that. Yeah. Appreciate it. I, I kind of felt you probably wouldn't be in a good mood. You can did... I hang up now? No, no, please don't, Doug. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling my obligation right now. If I, I hang up, I feel my obligation. Doug, I fully understand. I'm, I'm pissed off, Angelo. All right, what about Doug? I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off at myself. I'm pissed off at the way we played. And, and it's just, it, it frustrates me. It frustrates me to no end. And, you know, it's, it's, we have too much pride and uh, I have too much pride. These players have too much pride. We, we work our ass off during the week and, and, you know, it's, 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 it's frustrating. Doug Peterson, not sugarcoating how he's feeling there. Look who joins us now, Jeff Saturday, looking extra dapper today. Good to see you, Jeff. I will get to you in just a moment, but you know who I'm starting with. All matters concerning Carson Wentz, and that would be this guy, Max Kellerman. So, Max, who is more to blame now for the Eagles' struggle so far this season? Are you putting it on the coach in Peterson, or are you putting it on the quarterback, Carson? The quarterback. The quarterback won't re- – listen, the quarterback obviously has juice with the owner. I mean, everyone has heard this by now. And is he running Peterson's offense? And by the way, and if you run a little screen with a receiver, you got to go right to the receiver. He starts to throw. He pulls it back. He doesn't trust what his eyes are seeing him first series of the game. Off a bye, you think this wasn't a point of emphasis for Carson Wentz? And then he forces the throw, right? You think that's not a point of emphasis for Carson Wentz? And, I mean, maybe this last week I can't point to any single play where it's like, oh, my God, that's awful. Like so many plays throughout the course of this season. 13 turnovers in eight games in Eagles territory, right? There was nothing like that, but there was also no play where I was like, boy, that's a really good play by the quarterback. He's getting paid over $100 million to make those kind of plays. He's getting paid over $100 million to compensate for problems on the team when, in fact, guys, the truth of the matter is he has been outplayed by every single opponent he's faced this year. Just by by the way, by the eyeball test, by quarterback uh, rating. The, the opponents always had a higher quarterback rating than Wentz, and he hasn't faced a who's who. Daniel Jones has outplayed him twice. You know, I, he, has, he has not been good. He's made the same mistakes repeatedly, and I will remind everyone, after the game two weeks ago, he comes out and says, this is probably always going to be my problem, knowing when to eat it, knowing when to try to make the play, and that's just the way we do things around here. He's not being held accountable. He's not, he hasn't been benched. Um, He's the problem. If you want me, like he, I said a couple weeks ago, he needs. He wasn't the reason they're losing. He needs to be the reason they're winning. At this point, I also think yeah. he's one of the reasons that they're losing. Well, I disagree with you. Um, I'm not saying I'm not trying to knock uh, or rather to elevate Carson Wentz. I know that he's not having an impressive season. He's only complete 58 percent of his passes. He's got 12 interceptions to go. 